Disclaimer, I took a basic acting class and I'm just trying to relay my information over to you so that hopefully you can learn something as well, but I'm not trying to say I'm a good actor. In fact, please don't judge my acting. Uh, if you're some advanced actor out there, you do not need to be watching this video. Literally, you can leave. Unless you're like Ryan Reynolds or something, then please stay. And feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, <laughs> okay, here we go. What's up guys, it's DJ to Daddy and welcome to today's video where I'm doing another what I learned in one of my college classes and today it's theater. So let's hop right on in. We started off this class by doing improv and if you don't know what improv is, it's basically, you know, like improvising. You're just coming up with your characters and their actions and everything on the spot. So it's just not prepared ahead of time, no scripts, none of that. And this was a really fun place to start. There's lots of games that you can play with improv and although I'm only one person I'm gonna try and show you guys a couple of them right now so first we have the what are you doing game basically one person starts an action and then the other person asks them what, what they're doing? doing that person who's doing their action can't say what it obviously looks like they're doing they have to say something else drinking tea and then you just keep going back and forth what are you doing? Riding a horse. We also played this game called freeze. So people are acting however they're acting, coming up with stuff on the spot. And then another person from outside that can pause them and then jump into one of their spots. That one was my favorite. I'm gonna lasso this baby right now, watch me. Yeah. Freeze. Go. You are going to die right now, I'm telling you. My least favorite, however, was gibberish. I end up just saying like the same two sounds again, like ba 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 ya ba. Then I saw this strange looking object on the ground, so I picked it up. And once I realized what it was, I had to throw it far, far away and then run. I'm horrible at gibberish, guys. Why is it always turned into French? <laughs> this initially really shocked me, and that's that there are rules to improv. Like, it seems so counterintuitive because it's like improv. You know, like the whole idea is that it's not structured, but you do kind of need some rules as a baseline to help make sure that everybody can equally participate and have fun. These rules are based off of two TED Talks, The Way of Improvisation and Improv Comedy Will Change the World. So check out those TED Talks for more information. They're great. The first rule is just to simply play. Like, don't go in there with any expectations of how you want things to go. Just have fun with it. Let yourself fail. Seriously, like don't let don't let the voice inside of you control you like it's okay if it doesn't work out Because honestly experimenting around and trying new things will will make you get better eventually even if it doesn't work out the first time third This is one that like really helped me. It's just make connections right away Go with your intuition whatever it says if I say the word hamster Whatever that first word that comes to your mind you just roll with it and just keep it going next is listen and this was described in the TED talk as willingness to change. So like a lot of people, they'll think that something's going in one direction. Like they might be doing this and they might think they're juggling, but someone else might see that action in a different way. And you can't let that like get in your head. You just gotta roll with it. Like be okay with what the other person says. If you haven't heard this one before, this is the one, this is the one. And it is say yes and, not just yes, say yes and. So basically, if I say, I'm going to the dance with my brother, wanna come? You should say yes, but you should also say yes and I'm gonna wear my amazing crazy sneakers that I have. Like just, you could just go down a path, don't stop the path. 
You know what I'm saying? You can't control the whole thing. And that is also another thing. I do like to control everything. <laughs> so it just it just tells you a lot about yourself and what you need to like work on in life as well, which is kind of crazy. Finally, just be in the moment. If you're not in the moment, if you're thinking about like what happened a couple lines ago or what you think should happen a few lines ahead, you're not gonna have fun. You're not gonna be able to be. And like, as an actor, you have to learn to be someone you're not and live in that space. This unit also kind of got into the purpose of art and it's basically just to like reflect humanity. Like you wanna show the human condition in your work. Nobody is perfect. So you can't be a perfect actor. Everything can be improved. You can always improve your techniques, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Ryan Reynolds though, you good. <laughs> It's that growth mindset that I talked about in my GPS video, funnily enough. Like, I found so many relations between GPS and this course. I don't know why. But you should go check out my GPS video if you haven't. It's, it's also fun and it's also helpful for people, students, anybody. Next was the acting basics and this was like really the core of the class, I feel like. I'm gonna start by defining some key terms. So first, objective. This is your character's goal. And a format and a way to write this is I want to blank so that blank and that last blank is like your reward or to up the stakes even more you can say I must blank so that blank then you have tactics tactics are how your character goes about accomplishing their objective they're literally verbs guys like mock advise tease hide they relate to actions when tactics shift they make up beats so I feel like a lot of actors talk about beats and then like I was like what even is that? What does that mean? So this we didn't really get into in our fundamentals class. Bruh. It's like anytime you see a shift in the text, it starts another beat. It starts another beat and so on and so forth. And being able to clearly identify those beats can help you to make more clear choices with your character. To introduce this unit, we did a solo scene. And in this scene, we had to do six actions in a specific order, but obviously you can't make it look like you're just doing the actions. Like you've gotta add objectives and tactics on top of it to make it something like with a real story. So I'm gonna show you my solo scene and I want you guys to see if you can identify the six actions I was required to do. You never taught me how to disarm the lasers. Huh? Uh, sorry, I think you're breaking up. No. No! Uh.
on. I'm Shane, baby. The actions were, number one, enter through a door. Two, sit. Three, stretch arm. Four, lean against door. Five, open door and exit. And then six, look behind you. So, did I make those actions look natural? This was the beginning of the course, mind you. My professor gave us questions that we had to answer before performing our solo scene, and these were really helpful in making sure that we didn't have any gaps in our knowledge of our character. For my solo scene, I wrote, my character is named Tess and a recently homeless teenager who was kidnapped and forced into this mission. The reason Tess became homeless was because she got kicked out of her parents' house. So she was unable to finish high school and has never been able to provide for herself or wear fancy jewelry like the necklace she attempts to steal. So I wrote, Tess has just been dropped off by her kidnapper and the scene begins when she's sneaking through an art museum. By following her superior's instructions, Tess finds a hidden door which leads to a room that holds only one item, the box that Tess is required to steal. For my solo scene, I said, this scene takes place in the middle of the night on a Tuesday in the early 1960s. Why a Tuesday? Because I was presenting this on a Tuesday. And I don't know. The museum has been closed for a few hours, but there are still some workers on shift, so Tess must be careful not to alert any of them of her existence. This is what I wrote. The obstacles that my character faces are her lack of stealing skills, as well as her inability to maneuver through lasers in the security system without assistance from her superior due to the walkie-talkie losing connection. Run on sentence much? Okay. <laughs> Tess's was, I must fulfill my superior's wishes so that I can be safe and he will set me free. Obviously with the solo scene, the difficulty was the fact that we had to do certain actions in a certain order, but then we moved on to having to say certain things in a certain order. This was definitely a step up. We got the most bland dialogue in the world, like absolutely empty of any meaning and we had to make like a whole world and scene out of it. The dialogue we had to work with was person A, we're here. Person B, I see. Person A, now is the time. Person B, really? Person A, yes. Person B, I can't. Person A, please. Person B, okay. You'd be surprised how many different things you could come up with from that. Like. Everyone in our classes was different and it was great and like they all said it with a completely different tone, pitch, like everything. Honestly, I thought it was going to be boring going in there and listening to the same eight lines over and over again, but it wasn't. Here's a little snippet of my module two journal reflection. I said, some guidelines invited ideas to come more easily than if there was absolute freedom. This was very similar to the improv unit. You need some baseline in order to work from. Then it was finally time for acting with scripts, like real scripts. We had to do a three minute scene from Of Mice and Men and we were also in partners with this one. I ended up playing George and in our scene, there was not a lot of action. So we had to kind of build that in, but if you just take a little bit of time to think about where your character is coming from, like who they really are, which is one of the questions from the previous unit, I think that's where you can start to get that like personal personal aspect to it because if you can relate with your character you're you're able to just like actually play like by reacting so here's the scene we did I'm gonna blur my partner's face out so um you know privacy George huh tell me like you done before tell you what about the rabbits you ain't gonna put nothing over on me. Come on, George, please, tell me, like you done before. You get a kick out of that, don't you? All right, I'll tell you. Then we'll lay on our beds and eat our dinner. Go on, George. Guys like us that work on ranches is the loneliest guys in the world. They ain't got no family. They don't belong no place. 
They come to a ranch and work up a stake, and then they go into town and blow their stake. And then the first thing you know, they're pounding their tail on some other ranch. They ain't got nothing to look ahead to. That's it. That's it. Now tell how it is with us. With us, it ain't like that. We got a future. We got somebody to talk to that gives a damn about us. We don't have to sit in no bar room blowing in our jack just because we got no place else to go. If the mother guys gets in jail, they can rock for all anybody gives a damn. But not us, and why? Because, because I got you to look after me, and, and you got me to look after you, and that's why. <laughs> go on, George. You got it by heart. You can do it yourself. No, no, I, I forget some of the stuff. G tell how it's gonna be. Some other time. No, I'll tell how it's gonna be. Okay, someday we're gonna get the jack together, and we're gonna have a little house and a couple of acres and a cow, and some pigs, and- And live off the fat of the land, and, and have rabbits. Go on, George, tell about what we're gonna have in the garden, and the rabbits in the cages. Tell about the, the rain in the winter, and, and the cream on the milk so thick you can hardly cut it. Tell about that, George. Why don't you do it yourself? You know all of it. No, no, it ain't the same if I tell it. Go on, how I get to tend the rabbits. Well, we'll have a big vegetable patch, and a rabbit hutch, and chickens. And when it rains in the winter, we'll just say to hell with going to work. We'll build up a fire in the stove and sit around it and listen to the rain coming down on the roof. Nuts, I ain't got time for no more. What are you going to say tomorrow when the boss asks you questions? Uh, I ain't going to say a word. Good boy, that's fine. So maybe you're getting better. I bet I can let you tend the rabbits. Especially if you remember as good as that. I can remember by God. Lenny, I want you to look around here. Think you can remember this place? The ranch is about a quarter mile up that way. Just follow the river and you can get here. Sure, I can remember here, George. Didn't I remember about not going to say a word? Of course you did. Well, look, Lenny. If you just happen to get in trouble, I want you to come right here and hide in the brush. Hide in the brush. Hide in the brush until I come for you. Think you can remember that? Sure, George. Hide in the brush till you come for me. But you ain't gonna get in no trouble. Cause if you do, I won't let you tend the rabbits. I ain't gonna get in trouble. I ain't gonna say a word. You got it. Anyways, I hope so. It's gonna be nice sleeping here. Looking up. And the leaves. Don't build up no more fire. We'll let her die. Jesus, you feel free when you ain't got a job. If you ain't hungry. George? What do you want? Let's have different color rabbits, George. Sure. Red rabbits and blue rabbits and green rabbits. Millions of them. Furry ones, George. Like I seen at the fair in Sacramento. Sure, furry ones. Because I can just well go away, George, and, and go live in a cave. Aw, oh, shut up. George? What is it? I'm sure George. This was my first time memorizing that much text, and it can seem like a daunting task. I would say you have to say it out loud when you're doing it. Like, if you're just sitting there reading over it, trying to memorize, you're not gonna be able to memorize it. Like, it just didn't work. There are also a bunch of apps on your phone, which thank you so much to the person who recommended me these apps. This may sound weird, but like everybody speaks in a different way. So like I noticed with George, he says the word just a lot and he's kind of like very blunt, I feel like. So knowing how your character speaks can help you with understanding the exact, like every single word precise stuff. This scene pushed me to commit more fully, like deep in my understanding of the character and really just get a sense of their arc, how they're changing uh, throughout the scene. Finally, we did monologues, and at first I literally despised this unit, guys. A monologue is a long speech from a character to another character. So it's like different than a soliloquy, because soliloquy is to like the audience or to just to the character speaking to themselves. But this is like, you have to imagine another person. And as I wrote in my module four journal reflection, 
it was super unnatural to pretend to talk with someone that wasn't there. <laughs> Literally though. The most important part of your monologue is actually that other character. Seriously. If you don't know what that other character is doing at every second, something's gonna go wrong. If you take anything away from this monologue section, I want you to take away this. And that is that when you're searching for your monologue, make sure it's not a story. Make sure that your character wants something from the other person. My search for the monologue was so long and frustrating. I was literally going to give up. Like, I was like, why is this so difficult? And I figured out it was because I was trying to find a character that was like me. And you guys can't do that. Like, no one is gonna be exactly like you. Everyone has differences. And I feel like if I'd played a character that was so similar to me, I wouldn't have been able to see those differences. And that's really, really important. Being able to distinguish you from your character. So, my teacher recommended that I do a comedic monologue. Now, normally, you, in auditions, you would do two monologues, a comedic one and a dramatic one. And I don't know why, but I just automatically assumed I'm gonna do a dramatic one and I didn't even think about comedic. But now I realize it was really good for me to go in that direction and like, see a different side of myself. Another thing with monologues is you have to do a slate beforehand. So that's kind of where you say your name, you introduce yourself, what you're gonna be playing and where that character comes from. So for example, you could be like, hello, I'm Abby and I'm gonna be playing Alice from Alice in Wonderland. But don't move around as much. Don't move, don't move. Really try to lock yourself into place. I move around a lot. So that is a little bit of a problem. <laughs> For this assignment, however, we could only use monologues from published plays, which I guess narrowed it down. I mean, boundaries are supposed to be good. I have spoken to you before. We need a baseline to work from. So what monologue did I end up with? Well, I am so pleased with my monologue. This ended up being my favorite unit, I think, which is super surprising. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. Like we made a 180 turn. Oh, uh, it does have some swearing in it, but I will bleep it out. And it's not who I am, guys. It's not who I am, I promise. Hey, here's my monologue. Ah! Hi, my name is Grace McCracken and I'll be playing Cynthia from Goodbye Charles. Don't do it. Don't open that little box one more crack. Don't ask me to marry you. Shh, shh. Don't say another word, just listen. I can't let you do this to me. I mean, before I met you, I used to be such a I mean, seriously, everyone at work thought I was a huge No one actually liked me. Those people I introduced you to as my friends, they're not my friends. They're scared of me. Or they were, before I met you. Before you, I never used to say please or thank you at restaurants. I never used to smile or laugh at anyone's jokes but my own. I never used to tip more than 10%. But since being with you, I've begun to feel all warm inside, fuzzy. I find myself wanting to stroll in the park and whistle. I have these thoughts, these urges to donate to charities and help out in soup kitchens and hug people. Since being with you, I've given nearly $10 to homeless men, helped three old ladies cross the street, and I bought one of my so-called friends a present at full price. And it was something I knew she'd like. Don't you see? Don't you see that you've made me nice? And what really scares me is that you'll open that box and ask me to marry you, and I'll, I'll just nicely say, yes. And then, I'll be nice, for life. I'll be singing kumbaya for the rest of my days. I'll give back to the community, to the Salvation Army, to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And I'll do it anonymously. And then, one day, years from now, I'll wake up and have the horrible realization that I lived a good life, that I contributed. I mean, the planet already has millions of nice people. It doesn't need me too. I'm a and I want to stay that way. Please, stop, don't. I'm asking 
begging you. No, I'm begging you. I'm getting down on my knees. Will you please, please not marry me? Now, originally, this was really uncomfortable for me to do, but by the time I went up there and did it, oh my gosh, I had so much fun. So that really just, just good end to the semester, I guess. I have one more little thing I want to talk to you guys about, and that's nerves, because like everybody knows it can be so difficult, like right before you're performing, like the anticipation and the stress that comes from that, it's all... Ah, uh, it's crazy. So these are some ways that work for me to reduce my anxiety, but they might not work for you. First of all, just put in the practice beforehand. Make sure that you feel confident in your abilities beforehand, because if you're like, oh my gosh, I might forget my lines. Oh, oh, that is just going to be like a whole nother thing in there, and you really don't want to be thinking about your lines when you're up there. Number two, as stupid as it sounds, guys, just breathe in and out like try to calm your breathing down it changes the chemicals guys science stuff that i don't know and drink water and eat food like make sure you're fueled before you're going to do that number three i find that just like repeating my objective keeps me in that mindset of my character and it stops me from like overthinking little details number four don't try and play an emotion. Don't get hung up on, I need to do this thing this exact way. I need to like raise one eyebrow at this exact point. Just react to what you're seeing. Number five, don't be afraid to fail in front of an audience. Like everybody knows how hard it is going up there, especially if it's a class. Like we're all in the same situation here. And like, even it's not just being afraid to fail, it's being afraid to like look silly. Like, it's okay to be a silly person and like, be vulnerable. Honestly, just imagine no one's there. Treat it as like another practice. That's like the best way to put it. Six, walk on stage slowly. Like don't rush getting up there because if you're rushing getting up there, you're gonna rush through the whole scene and you wanna keep the pace and right. But also it gives you a time to like really settle your mind, settle into the scene. Finally, this is the one that calmed me down the most and I don't know what it is about it, but I like to write down on a small sheet of paper just like the core characteristics of who I'm playing. Anything about your role that like you seem to be struggling with a little bit, but don't make it too specific. Keep it a little bit broad and it'll help you see like the main focus that you're gonna be having. And then take that piece of paper and put it in your pocket for the actual performance. I did this for Of Mice and Men, and I did this for my monologue, and just something about having it in there, it's like, it keeps you, it keeps you in the scene a little bit better. So, if you guys wanna know, this is the one from my monologue, and here's what it says. You are strong and confident. You can be tough and take up lots of space. Take time to react very important with it, no matter what. Have fun, also no matter what. And really imagine him, the other person. Like, there's another little thing in there. There's a small part of you that still has feelings for him. Ah. So yeah, one final tip is, this is something anyone can do. Just go out there and watch other actors, whether that means actively going to a play and understanding the choices that all of these amazing, talented humans are making when they're playing on that stage, or just simply like going to a movie, literally just go to a movie, but actively engage. It's all about actively seeking the knowledge. Oh, and for improv, check out Whose Line Is It Anyway if you are not a child. It's inappropriate for children. If you're a child, don't watch it. But otherwise, it's fun. Enjoy acting, enjoy everything, and it'll all be okay. You can do it. I believe in you. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something that is the ultimate purpose of this video. So if you have any other acting tips, please leave them in the comments because that is super helpful. And if you want me to do another what I learned in one of my classes, let me know what type of class you would be interested in me doing that for. Because I mean, I don't want to teach you guys calculus or anything. That would be strange. I'll see you guys next week with another video. I love film, guys, if you didn't know. Oh, it got so dark, I just realized that. Okay, sorry, I get distracted. I love film because, like, 
Ah, I just love film. I can't even explain it. <laughs> I heart film. I heart film, guys. 